I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? Samuel is disappointed because we had all of this drama between Samuel and God and the Israelites about the Israelites wanting a king. God chooses a king and he seems to be a very good choice for a while and things then go sideways and Saul falls out of favor. He falls out of favor because he starts to trust in himself more than he trusts in God. And that leads to predictable results. We find when we look back and we see, well, obviously that wasn't going to work out so well. And we know that King David is coming. So we, as outside observers, get to watch this, this play out. But Samuel, who is there in the midst of it, Samuel, who tried to dissuade the Israelites uh, from getting a king, begrudgingly went along with the plan, but gave it his best effort, tried to counsel Saul, tried to support Saul. Now he's grieving over Saul's decline. And God says, it's time to stop looking at the past. It's time to be with me now, Samuel, as we prepare for the future. And he sends Samuel to go find David. And he doesn't know his name. Samuel doesn't know what he's actually looking for. He goes to the house of Jesse. He sees Jesse's sons. And we see how humanity sizes up each of these sons. Each son is brought to him in turn, and he keeps thinking, oh, this is the one. This is a leader. This is the one. This is a warrior. This is the one. He looks really strong. And God keeps saying, nope, nope, nope. Finally, Jesse runs out of sons, and Samuel says, is that it? There's nobody left? And Jesse says, well, yeah, there's my youngest. He's out with the sheep, but you really don't want him. Samuel says, bring him. No one's eating dinner until he gets here. David arrives, and God speaks. But it had to start with God reminding Samuel to get into the present moment. I've been at Trinity for about 10 years. I joined you in October of 2011. The people who are here now are different from the people who were there then. There is some overlap, of course. But those of you who were here before 2011, when you look around, you see some new faces. Praise God. You see some faces that weren't even born yet. <laughs> Praise God. And we see some gaps, some people who are missing. And even to that, I say praise God because we know where they are. They've joined the, the hosts of heaven. They're part of that great cloud of witnesses. They're part of that, that group that is getting things ready for us up in heaven. Praise God. But something that was clear when I came to Trinity was how deeply we treasured our past. And in fact, it's part of our mission statement now. I remember hearing stories about the Brooks family and the Schuler family. I remember hearing stories about, I forget if it was Mr. Brooks or Mr. Schuler, footing the bill for like the whole Easter celebration for Trinity Church. I remember hearing about, about patrons of the church who were paying the, the acolytes, what, something like a quarter per service to serve. 
paying the children's choir. I remember stories like that, and they warm my heart, and I, I assume they warm your heart as well. They are still meant to be treasured memories. It's part of our beautiful heritage. But those days are gone. And I think part of our work as a church is to go ahead and grieve that that stuff has passed. That it is no longer 1950, that our average Sunday attendance is no longer 500. Can you imagine 500 people in this church? How many services that had to be? How big the altar core was? It was in the, there was at least 50 kids. All of those things that were wonderful. But those days were gone before I was born. How long will you grieve over Saul? God is here with us right now. God has been with us in different ways throughout our individual lifetimes and through the, the corporate lifetime, the, the communal lifetime of Trinity Church. And it's important that we keep telling those stories. Just like it's important that we keep reading scripture. It's important that we keep telling the story of God's work in our community. But we can't get so wrapped up, tied up, committed to that past that we become blind to what God is doing with us, for us, to us, alongside us, right now. Because at the same time that, that we are telling those stories, which again are important, there's also a seed growing here in secret. That God has planted something in you and in me. That God has planted something here in this church family. And we don't know what it is yet. We don't know what it's going to look like yet. But we can trust that it's growing. And we get to participate in that work. We have the privilege, the joy, the, the amazing responsibility of watering that seed, fertilizing that seed, protecting that seed so that it can grow. And we don't know what is happening underneath the surface. When you're standing above it and you're looking at the dirt, it just looks like dirt. But has anybody ever seen one of those videos where they actually show what's happening to, usually it's like a bean or something where you see that it's just a seed and then you see it break open. And you see the skin of it shed. And you see this shoot start to come up. When you're standing above it, that looks like a big lot of nothing. But we know that there's a lot more than nothing happening beneath the surface. God is here. God is making all things new. And when we say all things, we have to believe all, right? That means that the person who was born and raised in this church is being made new just as much as Benjamin and Charlie in the back. We have to believe that the people whom we love yet see no longer are being made new as well. That is part of God's work. And right now, this particular moment in time, there is a lot of change. There's a lot of accommodation, a lot of adjustment, and that's hard. One of the things that I love to do in prayer is centering prayer. I like to sit and say one word until that word fades away and I just sit. I like that. <laughs> Life gets so frenetic. Life gets so crazy. It's nice to be able to plant myself and be nourished by God. But that's not the whole of my life in Christ. That's not the whole of my ministry to you. I have to carve out time to do that, but I don't get to stay there. 
God is calling this community to something great, something beautiful, something holy. And as we emerge from our cocoon that COVID wrapped around us, what is God calling us to next? Every single person here has a ministry. So what is it? Is it prayer? Are you praying or are you called to pray? Whether you're doing it is another story, and I will raise my hand as someone who's not always doing what God wants me to do. But are you praying for each other daily? What's stopping you? Do you forget who you're supposed to pray for? I'll give you a tool. It's called your church directory. Do you not have a church directory? I can get you one. <laughs> if you don't have one of those and you don't want to talk to me, get out the phone book. Pray through the phone book. Pray through your memories. How is God calling you to pray? Are you somebody who has been here in Trinity working for years and years and you're ready to step back, you're ready to retire from your ministry? Are you called to rest? And if so, that is also wonderful. But are you called also perhaps to teach, to train, so that your ministry that you love so dearly, that you gave up decades of your life for it, that that ministry doesn't go away just because you are ready to move to another phase. But are you training, teaching someone else to take that ministry on, to make that new? Do you have the gift of generosity? Are you financially supporting the church? That's also important. It keeps the lights on. That's also part of the life of the church. Do you have a gift for working with children? Do you have a gift of a really loud voice? <laughs> Do you like to work behind the scenes? Do you like to be up in front of people? Do you sing? Boldly, I guarantee you, every single person here has a ministry. This is not like those amusement parks where you have to be this tall to enter. You notice I put the line, you know, I think it's below my height. <laughs> even children who aren't even walking and talking necessarily yet, have a ministry? How can we as a community foster that growth? How can we celebrate their presence among us? You folks at home who are watching online, maybe in real time on, on the morning of June 13th, maybe later over a cup of coffee when things have settled down a little bit. How are you participating in the work of God? Because God is calling you also. And we can spend a lot of time grieving. And yes, grief is a natural and holy process as well. But because of Christ, grief is not the end. Jesus was resurrected. We take time to grieve. And then something new happens, something grows, something to celebrate. We are in an incredibly exciting time in the church. We, uh, there was a, a time during COVID, especially in the lockdown, that a lot of artists were, were producing things from home and putting them out on YouTube. And there was one song that kept talking about a chrysalis, that we were all in a chrysalis. And it's about time to emerge. Look, we're here. Yes, we have masks. Yes, we have ropes on. Yes, our tech is still getting upgraded, but we're getting there. This is that, that time when the butterfly starts 
pushing against that chrysalis to make that opening. This is that time when the seed has to start getting stronger and stronger so that shoot can split it open and get room to grow. This is that time when, when the baby bird is pushing against the shell or a turtle, if you're a turtle person. They have to be strong enough to break through. We're not there yet. We are still getting stronger and testing our muscles. So when you see something around the church that rubs you the wrong way or, or makes you want to push back, maybe that is that shell pushing back against you and you need to get stronger. Listen to what God is telling you. Is it a time to rest, a time to push, a time to wait, a time to give, a time to receive? Everything changes. But living in the past is not on the table. Celebrating and, yes, even grieving the past, that's part of the process, but we don't stay there. We move forward. We look around this beautiful world that God has created and we say, God, what is next? How do you want me to fit into this? How do you want me to serve? How do you want me to lead? How can I show your compassion, your love, unequivocal, unending, unlimited love? God is something amazing in store. God is in the process of making all things new, including me, including you, and including this family that is larger than any one of us. So let's get going. Let's get praying. And let's get stronger as we go forward into this world to show it the power of God's love.